Welcome back, welcome back. This is going to be M2, so merit, the second merit point for Unit 6, Website Development. And for this one, we need to justify the design decisions, explaining how they will meet the user's needs and be fit for purpose. What does that mean? What is it? How will it meet the needs? So all the stuff you said that you're going to do in your designs and all the stuff you have shown in your designs, why are they important? How are they going to help the client do what they need to do? For example, you can refer uh, to your requirement list, so your list of requirements, and go through each of them and show how you made your design have each of these things. So you can look at your list of requirements and say how you will meet each one. I've done the first one here. I won't do any more because I think it's pretty self-explanatory. So it says a website with navigation stroke multiple pages. There will be a navigation section which will consist of rollover buttons. The rollover effect will give the website some interactivity as well as be functional. So again, a website with navigation or multiple pages. What that means is that your website isn't simply a website that has one single page. You can click on something or tap on something to go to another page. Now, when you do that on my website, I'm saying I'm going to use rollover buttons. What are rollover buttons, you ask? Imagine you go onto a website and every time you move your mouse over a particular button, let's see if IGN has one. I'll, I'll keep using IGN as my example, but let's see if IGN has one. Okay, this, this is a rollover button technically, right? It's not a very great way to demonstrate it, but every time I move my mouse over it, it, something about it changes slightly. Now, I can make this anything I want. For me, I might make the text change color. So it's very, 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 very obvious. Underlining is pretty obvious here as well. I might make the text change color and I, make, and I might make the background change color as well. What I've done is I've actually come up with a list of design stroke implementation things that would be good to speak about. So I'm going to skip all of this because I've given the example here on what you need to do. So follow that same method to try and do as many of these as you can. But you have to link it back to your requirements because it simply says explaining how they will meet the user's needs and be fit for purpose. The user's needs are the requirements. That is what the user requires. They require a website that has m multiple pages. They require a website that has images. They require, this is for me again, they require a website that has videos, audio, text. Um, they They require a website that has links to other web pages. So maybe external links. A really good one, I think, for my website, because I'm going to be doing gaming stuff. I'm going to be doing, I think it was Grand Theft Auto 5, I said. I'm going to be having videos on GTA 5. So a really good one to link to other web pages might be a video to YouTube of Rockstar's page showing GTA 5 or a link from my website to a very popular YouTuber's web, well, YouTuber's YouTube page of them um, playing GTA 5 or just a really popular GTA 5 playlist, anything that's external. Let's say you're, I don't know, speaking about reviewing games, then maybe a link to an IGN video on the IGN website would be really, really good. That's how I would do that one. Um, there should be a navigation bar menu for easy navigation. This is kind of the same thing, but this just speaks about the navigation in itself and not the buttons. The purpose of this one here was to speak about the rollover buttons. Having a navigation bar or menu just means as um, you you put these buttons together in a similar location. So typically speaking, it, it, it either runs across the top of the page or along the left-hand side, the right-hand side, with, with whichever one the company decides to use. Uh, let's go to what other web page do I use? Um, GameSpot. Uh, spelled it wrong. Okay, so GameSpot, they have their buttons across the top. Okay, let's decline this. Yeah, so GameSpot have their buttons across the top. So this is their navigation, right? And as, as you can see, they have a more obvious rollover. So not only does it have an underline, as you can see there, it also has a, um, sorry, the text changes to red. So it has an underline underneath where my mouse is, plus the text changes to red. That's more obvious, even though the text here is a bit smaller, but that's what rollover buttons typically tend to look like. You can have them as images as well. So when I move my mouse over this one here, for example, it blurs the background a bit and it also animates this text to move up slightly. Next, okay, let me go back to this list. Uh, rollover buttons should be used. I mean, I have repeated myself quite a bit here, so maybe don't do what I do. Don't repeat yourself. Remove what you don't need. Let me go down to my list. 
So web design version two, um, again, I've already shown you screenshots of what you should put in for web design version one. Web design version two is gonna be more or less the same thing. Just put the updates in. So it says, uh, for me, I'm gonna have desktop and mobile and I, and I explain this design decision. So as you guys remember back, let me scroll all the way back up. I had a mobile version or mobile screenshots or what, would, what it would look like on a mobile. And I also had desktop screenshots. That was a design decision. And my decision, my reasoning behind this was that most people nowadays, they access their online stuff from their mobile. I can't tell the last time I had to log into my laptop or desktop to actually book a restaurant or book a plane ticket. It's all done on my phone. I never have to log into my laptop for any of this stuff. My laptop is now only for work. So a benefit of having a mobile desktop, or sorry, a mobile website is that more people will be able to access the website. I've also mentioned that I'm going to be using HTML as this is the standard for every or most websites around the entire planet. So using HTML is a standard thing. I've mentioned color schemes simply because I mentioned in my updated web design thing that I wanted my color schemes to match. My color schemes matching with my logo, the typical color of the company, helps with brand recognition. This is the whole point, point of doing this. Now, even though it didn't say specifically that um, the website had to be good for brand recognition and all of that, the whole point of a website, typically speaking, is to get more users to either use the company services or buy more stuff from that website. So there's no downside to having brand recognition. Here I've said multimedia. So videos will be added to their, oh, sorry, from their YouTube channel. The alternative would be to upload each video to the website. I've opted to not upload individual videos to the website because it would have the website move a lot slower. Having simply a YouTube link on the website where they can still play it from the website, but if they wanted to, they, they could go and watch it on YouTube as well. It's much better in my opinion. It gives a lot more flexibility. I've said audio files are relatively small. Uh, if the appropriate file format is used, here there will be two podcasts of people speaking about the game. The files will be uploaded to the website directly. These are very small files. I don't need to link these using an HTML link. I can simply upload this because they're going to be maybe a megabyte or two. That's it, maximum. And here I've said a multi-image banner that was in my design thing as well. Uh, the banner will have images from other games created by Rockstar as well as the new game being showcased. So on my website, let's just say this were, this is the IGN banner, right? Rather than simply, let me pause this. I think that's a big part oh, of their game. Rather than simply having just the IGN thing here, I would have IGN, then I would maybe have a GTA 5 logo here, then a GTA 4 logo, GTA 3, Vice City, San Andreas, so on and so forth. I would have multiple things there. So that's what I mean when I say um, multi-image banner, sorry. Having a navigation bar, I've mentioned that previously. The navigation bar will consist of rollover buttons. This is to enhance the usability and attractiveness of the website. If possible, there will be a sound from the game each time a rollover acti um, is activated. So what that means, every time I move a mouse over, let's say where it says 2022 game releases here, it won't just change the color and uh, put the un underlying thing there. What it might do as well, what I've done in the past, I'm not sure, I don't even remember how to do it, but I will figure it out again, is every time I move a mouse over that image or that text, it makes a sound. So some gaming websites, it might be, let's say it's Call of Duty, it might be a small gunshot sound. If it's something like, I don't know, uh, Breath of the Wild for Zelda, it might be like a sword clinching against another sword sound. Whatever sound you think is relevant for your website, it's not something you have to do, but because my website is a gaming website, is, is, is something to do with games, then having that kind of thing there is good. If your website is a football website, I don't know, every, maybe every time you click on a new button, it makes a sound like a football scoring sound where people start shouting and screaming, saying goal or what, whatever it is that you think is relevant for your website. This is just a random feature that I want to add. So I've also said I'm going to have the buy page allowing people to buy the game directly from the website as one of the things that companies said they wanted to do was to move away from having other people sell their games. So not having Amazon and GameSpot. And uh, here in the UK, we have CEX, Computer Exchange, selling the games. They want to sell the game themselves. So when they sell that game for 55, 65 pounds, they get all the money. When Amazon sells it, Amazon gets a cut of that money as well, which is not great for them, but 
it's okay because that's a deal they've made. I've mentioned rollover buttons here again. I uh, probably did that too many times, but obviously you shouldn't do that. But let me just quickly do a review of um, what this means again. So to justify the design decisions. So the things you said or did in your design above and the design was P, I think it was P2 or P3. Yeah. So the things you did in P2 and P3 where you actually showed what you want to have. So here's a mobile version of my website. Here is a desktop version of my website. The things you want to actually do on your website, you're going to justify them down here. Why do you want to have social media buttons on the bottom of the page? For me, for example, having social media icons at the bottom of the page meaning, means of, of, um, at the bottom of every page, actually, means that people don't have to keep going back to the About Us page to actually find where these people are on social media and follow them. We all know that YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, all of these places, it's a really good place for companies to market. It's a really good place for, um, to get followers and answer questions rather than using a website. YouTube is probably the biggest search, search engine thing in the entire world. Every single person I know goes onto YouTube at least once or twice a day. So if I can have someone come to my website and then they click on the YouTube thing, go to YouTube, subscribe or like a video, when I release a new video on a new game or a new feature of my current game, if they're subscribed and they have the bell ticked or whatever, then they'll get a notification saying a video has been released. This increases my following. This increases my, my um, interaction with my customers because they're going to watch a video, like it, and potentially they could go out and buy that game because, oh, that's a really nice new feature. I want that game now. Right? So that's the reason for having my social media icons at the bottom. So that's it from me for justifying the design decisions and explaining how they'll meet the user's needs. So after you justify it, you just try and link it back to how will this actually benefit the user? So for example, a website with navigation or multiple pages having rollover buttons, it makes it more interactive. It makes it functional as well because those navigation buttons, those rollover buttons coming together actually make that navigation bar, which I mentioned somewhere down here. And a navigation bar is somewhat needed to move around a website because this is GameSpot's navigation bar. I can move across all of these and I can click on the section I want. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do for my website, relatively so. Not exactly how they've done it, but somewhat similar.